For the robot to function correctly, it must always be on. The charging base must always be connected to the power outlet, and the robot itself must always be on. The robot only uses about two to five dollars in electrical power per month, so its costs are immaterial and more competitive than the alternatives. Since the methods the robots use to cut the grass are very efficient, it costs almost nothing to operate. First, the charging base must always be connected to the power outlet. There are several wires connected to the back of the charging station. These wires complete a loop around the property to tell where the robot to go and not to go. They communicate to the robot using a low AM signal that emit no electrical energy. The low AM radio waves travel only a few feet from the wire, which is typically buried a few inches into the lawn. If this is unplugged, the robot will not work. Also, for security reasons, the robot must be able to communicate and be inside the loop to function. So, if this charging base is ever unplugged, it will appear that the robot has been removed from the loop and will not operate and give an outside working area air. Now we know that the charging base is connected into the power outlet, we can check to see if the robot is powered on. So I crawled down in front of the garage and lift up the console's flap, and I can see the screen LED that illuminates a message readout saying, waiting for scheduled time. This is very important. For the robot to start its loop, the robot must be in the charging station, powered on, and the readout must read, waiting for scheduled time. If I lift up the flap and there is no power or LED illumination, the robot is most likely powered off and must be powered back on to dot and be docked by hitting the home button so it will find the charging base using the perimeter wire.